Good afternoon, brethren. Today is March the 19th, 2018, and Father has uh, summoned me to speak a word um, regarding the times in which we're in. Before I get started, I want to give all praise and glory to Father Yahweh, Yahuwah, our Mashiach, Yahushua, and the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh, for imparting wisdom and knowledge. I apologize. Just getting used to this application. Okay, actually I had my eyes closed praying. So anyhow, I hope that you all are in good spirits. Um, one of the things that um, Father wants me to remind us all of is I know that we are all getting anxious um, for the time that we're living in. Of course, we're told to stay on watch, and I think um, the uh, seasons and the signs clearly are speaking volumes right now. One of the things that um, we want to remember is to make sure that we're leaving behind our left-behind letters, for we don't know who will um, be left behind, and so we want to make sure that we are, are doing just that and making sure that we have plenty of Bibles um, left um, where it would be easily accessible in our homes. Um, another thing is to encourage us all in the body of Christ and the saints. Um, it is our obligation. Um, and one of our brethren, um, Chris Mackey, he actually reminded me of this yesterday. And I really feel like um, Father had sent me to his channel to take a look at his video. And he made a very um, true statement, just a very true statement, although we know that Father has us prophesying um, certain things that are coming up in the time that we are living in, which is the apocalypse, and we know that the apocalypse is the unveiling of things that were hidden. Now, that's not to say that we are to not and not prophesy those things. Of course we are. But we also want to stay very mindful in our calling. And we want to make sure that not only aside from leaving the left behind letters and ensuring that there's Bibles uh, in our homes, but we also want to make sure that we, beyond feeding his um, sheep, um, is to make sure that we are trying to reach as many of his children in these days and calling them out of their sin and calling them to repentance, um, to receive him as um, King of King and Lord of Lords. So that's very important. Now, I'm going to go ahead and continue because I don't want to make this long, but this is very um, poignant at this particular time. And so I had asked Father for instruction, and these are the scriptures that he gave me. So in Romans chapter 10, verse 13 through 15, King James Version, For so who, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And that's going to be very important for us all, um, for us to instruct and encourage, because we don't know the um, the you know, the timeline. We don't know exactly precisely how everything's going to fold out, but we do know that we must, at whichever stage we are in prophecy, we need to make sure that we are, um, and, and I, I hope that my thumbprint wasn't on the screen there, but I apologize. Like I said, I'm just getting used to this app. So, um, Nevertheless, we want to make sure that um, whatever stage we come, um, we find ourselves in, that we make sure that we are encouraging um, the body of Christ um, regarding, uh, or excuse me, his saints. Um, we want to make sure that we are voicing for them to call out upon the name of the Lord, and indeed, um, that person shall be saved. So, you know, if they believe that with all of their heart, indeed, you know, we are not, we don't know who's going to stay behind. We don't know who's staying behind to be refined. But nevertheless, we need to give them that hope. We are to be the light uh, for them. So, because we know that the bride is going to be taken out and the bride is oftentimes called, um, you know, we are the light of the world. So, we certainly want to make sure that we provide that light for them, that hope for them. Okay, so I'm going to continue. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? See how that fits? Those who had not believed. Let me read that again. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. 
So again, it's very important for us to leave that with them, leave those words of hope, whatever the case may be. Now, I had asked Father if he wanted me to speak this word forth, and so I got on bent knee and anah, and I just prayed out to him, and I asked him, Father, give me an undeniable verse. And he gave me the chapter of Jeremiah 5. I'm going to include what he's having me read here, but b- please um, take to the pin message. As I've stressed before, make sure you're reading the pin message because it has all of these that you can um, read for yourself and just see how great Father is how merciful he is, and and just walking us through all of this. He clearly is with us. So um, let me start with that. And that is, Nevertheless, in those days, says the Lord, I will not make a complete end of you. He's speaking of Israel. And it will be when you say, Why does the Lord our God do all these things to us? Then you shall answer them, Just as you have forsaken me and served foreign gods in your land, so you shall serve aliens in a land that is not yours. Declare this in the house of Jacob and proclaim it in Judah, saying, Hear this now, O foolish people, without understanding, who have eyes and see not, and have ears and hear not. Do you not fear me, says the Lord? Will you not tremble at my presence? Who have placed the sand and as the bound of the sea, by a perpetual decree that it is cannot pass beyond it. And though its waves toss to and fro, yet they cannot prevail. Though they roar, yet they cannot pass over it. But this people has a defiant and a rebellious heart. They have revolted and departed. They do not say in their heart, Let us now fear the Lord our God who gives rain both the former and the latter in its season. He reserves for us the appointed weeks of the harvest. Your iniquities have turned these things away, and your sins have withheld good from you. Now, on the topic, um, and again, if you did not notice, that was for the house of Israel. In regards to this word today, um, we are going over um, what is on the horizon virtually, which is the equinox that is scheduled for March the 20th, 2018, and also in September, and it's right about September 22nd, if I'm not mistaken. Um, So I'll go over that here. Now, the the defining of equinox, um, the time or date twice each year at which the sun crosses the celestial equator when day and night are the equal length, March 20th and September 22nd. It is called the equinox vernal and autumnal. Okay, so again, it's twice a year that this happens. At the equator, the sun is directly overhead at noon. Now we know what happens at noon. Um, in scripture, that is, and at some point, the appointed hour. Um, These two equinoxes, the nearly equal hours of the day and night, is due to refraction of sunlight or a bending of the light's rays that causes the sun to appear above the horizon when the actual position of the sun is below the horizon. Additionally, the days become a little longer at the higher latitudes, those at a distance from the equator, because it takes the sun longer to rise and set. Therefore, on the equinox, and for several days before and after the equinox, the length of day will range from about 12 hours and 6 and a half minutes at the equator to 12 hours and 8 minutes at 30 degrees latitude to 12 hours and 16 minutes at 60 degrees latitude. We further um, read and can align this with scripture. When Father first created um, the earth, It reads in Genesis chapter 1, verse 14 through 18. And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament, in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years, and let them be for lights in the firmament, again, in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. Okay. And to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. 
In this Genesis 1 passage, we see the absolute, for instance, of time and seasons. God spoke it, and it happened. Remember, Father told us we were created by thought. This was something that He had given me and I had shared with you a couple weeks ago. This is how the day and night were made, as well as how God declared. He declared it, and so it was done. He made it. How God declared the light, sun, moon, and stars to be used as the compass to measure the seasons. He said that the greater light, the sun, would rule the day, and that the lesser light, the moon, and the stars, would rule the night. He said it, and it happened. And from there out, we have relied upon His perfect plan. In Galatians chapter 6, verse 7 through 10, Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh, this is why Father keeps telling us, crucify the flesh so that we can walk in the Spirit successfully. Do not please man, please Father. This is His will that He has left for us to implement we cannot do that if we are in the flesh. I'm going to continue. For he that soweth to his flesh shall, shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Very important. Let's read that again. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially, brethren, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. We are to treat, treat one another with love. We are to impart each other with a kiss when we speak to each other, when we communicate with each other. In Daniel chapter 2, verse 21, And he changeth the times and the seasons, he removeth kings and setteth up kings, he giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. Now we know that he is about to set up certain kings and removeth certain kings. Why do we know this? Because in Revelation chapter 17, verse 17, And the ten horns and the beast that you saw will hate the prostitute. They will leave her desolate and naked and will eat her flesh and burn her with fire. For God has put it into their hearts to carry out His purpose by uniting to give their kingdom to the beast until the words of God are fulfilled. And the woman you saw is the great city that rules over the kings of the earth. Again, and the woman you saw is the great city that rules over the kings of the earth. Aman. I'm not going to add anything else to it to this other than just um, telling you that I love you, that it's very important that we come together in unity in the body of Christ. Please read Psalm 133.1. Clearly and surely, this pleases the Lord. Please treat each other with love. Let us come together for His will and not of our own. Let us crucify the flesh to walk successfully in the Spirit. Amen. God bless you, and I hope you have a good day.